no denying it, Toyo Todoroki kind of went after Shoto. This is awfully dark. What's up guys, it's Truth Hero, and welcome back to another My Hero Academia chapter review. So Boku no Hero Academia chapter 301 of the manga, we finally get to see Toya Todoroki's true backstory. And although Endeavor is to blame, there's no denying that he's made mistakes with his family, it's not exactly the picture of Toya Todoroki and all the abuse from Endeavor that we had in our heads. It's quite different. So let's dive in. The chapter opens with a bit of backstory on Rei and Endeavor meeting each other for the first time and their marriage. We learn that Rei's given name is Himura, and of course she's from a very prestigious family. Rei is fine, she's always been fine. Uh, well, almost. I really like this part where Enji and Rei are getting to know each other, and Endeavor describes her as a woman like ice, but if I touched her, she might just melt away. I mean, yeah, fire melts ice. <laughs> In all seriousness, this is a very cute scene, and I love the fact that Horikoshi included this part about Rei liking the flowers and Endeavor noticing that, because it all goes back to day one when they first met. Endeavor may not have been on good terms with Rei when he sent those letters and when he sent those flowers and was trying to communicate with her, but it was kind of romantic, and that action and gesture might have just saved their relationship at least as people that will talk to each other when all of this happens with Toya. And you can actually tell that Rei truly loves Endeavor. Even though it's an arranged marriage or a quirk marriage, she actually follows through pretty gracefully for her family and then their future relationship. There's also this part where she's now talking with Endeavor at the hospital, and you just get the sense that she's still, despite everything that's happened, very devoted to him. He asks her, you know, are you okay? And she's like, of course I'm not okay. I'm worried about our family. I'm worried about you. She never says that, but you sense it. We flash over to the villains, and Dobby is lamenting on the fact that he really burned himself, really toasted himself going after Endeavor. And how he can't wait to see Endeavor face the public. Dobby, of course, still just wants to see Endeavor fall, wants to see him become a broken, beaten down man. But now that Rei and the rest of the Todorokis have arrived at the hospital and are talking with Endeavor, I'm not so sure Dobby will achieve this goal. All the fallen son of Endeavor wants to see is his father fall to his depths of hell, to fall from grace as a hero, to face the public with his shame, for his family and everyone else to cast him out. That's Dobby's only dream. I really don't know if Dobby's ever going to see this scheme and plan of his come to fruition. I think because of what Dobby did, the Todorokis actually might come together and become stronger and actually have a tighter bond despite everything that's happened, or because of everything that's happened. They might realize that this is the final straw. They need to come together as a family and work out all of their issues because I think everyone in this family has some blame on them. Maybe not Fuyumi or Natsuo, but no one's, uh, no one's completely innocent. Also, you have people like Hawks who is currently on his way to find Endeavor and talk with him. I can't imagine that Hawks is trying to bring down Endeavor further. He's going to help him out. So Endeavor has support of his family, other pro heroes, and also I don't think the UA students are just going to cast Endeavor out, so at the very least, he has some hero hopefuls that are on his side. I just don't think Dobby's plan to ruin Endeavor's image is really going to bring him down. The public may hate him, but that's not exactly something new for the heroes right now. What do you guys think though? Will Dobby with his tears of blood ever get his father to fall to hell? Or will the Todorokis come together as a family and ascend? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I'm interested to hear your theories on this. The rest of this chapter gives us a nice unique insight into how Toyo Todoroki became Dobby. And fair warning, it's a bit dark, but again, not for the reasons we'd expect. 
If you were someone wanting an elaborate backstory detailing Endeavor's abuse and neglect of his firstborn son and finally seeing what drove little Toya to have so much hate and resentment for Enji Todoroki, you'll be kind of disappointed. I mean, I guess that's a good thing. You don't want to see Endeavor abuse and neglect his kids, but it's certainly unexpected. And I'm not saying Endeavor isn't to blame. Of course he's responsible for certain things that happened with Toya and of course all the abuse that he put Shoto through. But with Toyo Todoroki, he's not the only person in the family that bears some responsibility. It's not so cut and dry. Toya is seen upset that Endeavor keeps putting off training with him, but there's good reason for this. We find out that Toya obviously inherited his father's fire, but also inherited his mother's body or ability and an adaptability to the cold, meaning Every time he uses his quirk, his body cannot resist his own fire. So any dreams that he has of surpassing Endeavor and never mind All Might, it'll always end with Toya playing with fire and getting burned. This is unfortunately one consequence of designing children through quirk marriages. So if there's one thing that Endeavor and Ray's family are automatically at fault for, it's trying to create the perfect child to fulfill Endeavor's obsession with surpassing All Might. Toya was really inspired by his father Endeavor to surpass All Might, and he wants to chase this dream no matter what, even if it burns him, even if it kills him. and. No one, not even cute little Fuyumi, can tell him otherwise. He's stubborn, just like his father. I feel really bad for Toyo Todoroki here because all the kids at school ever talk about is becoming a hero. There's no, ooh, I'll become an athlete, so I'll train, or ooh, I'll become an astronaut. There's no dreams like that. It's, we want to be heroes. Everyone wants to be a hero. So, because his fire quirk doesn't work with his DNA and body that is made for ice or his mother's fragile constitution in the face of fire and being burned, there's no way that he can actually ever be a hero. Sure, he can use his quirk, but how is he going to save people when he's helpless and, you know, damaging his body? And for a kid that has that dream and wants to be a hero, what do you tell him? Honestly, it just reminds me of Deku. It's another parallel. He didn't have a quirk and like we saw, his mother didn't really have a way to tell him that he unfortunately can't be a hero and pursue that dream. And then even when he does get a quirk, he gets one for all, he still breaks his body. So he has to learn how to be a hero and not be helpless on the battlefield. It also reminds me of Shigaraki, you know? All this kid ever wanted to be was a hero, and then he ends up being the greatest villain of the series. So maybe it's time to rethink what it means to be a hero. Maybe we should think about other things that can bring people joy and happiness. Also, right now, being a pro hero isn't really prestigious anymore. When we finally do get the hint that Endeavor is going to do something drastic to Toya to make him give up on this impossible dream of surpassing him and All Might, it's again not what we really expected from Endeavor. Knowing that Toya senses he wants something specific from his children, Endeavor tells Rei Toya can't surpass All Might, and they decide to have another child, eventually Rei giving birth to Shoto, someone who can surpass him. Toya's story is so tragic because it comes from a very normal theme inside the family, children seeking approval from their parents. But because of Endeavor's hard-ass attitude and his crazy obsession with surpassing All Might, Toya believes that the only way to gain his father's approval and affection is for him to become a hero, to surpass his father, and then surpass All Might. And as we see, Toya will do just about anything to gain this approval, even burning himself. Endeavor does not know how to talk Toya out of this delusion. Clearly, he needs to do a better job, and it's obvious that Endeavor probably wasn't ready to be a father, at least not in all the responsibilities it takes in raising children. He's a great motivator, you know, he can inspire people to chase the heroic dream, I'm sure he gets his sidekicks pumped up, but raising a child is not raising a co-worker to meet your standards. And if there is one thing that Endeavor could have done differently, 
it would be for him to reflect upon his own goal of surpassing All Might and maybe give up that crazy dream so that he didn't ruin two of his son's lives in the process of this. Toya with trying to gain his father's approval and then pushing Shoto so hard to the point where he resented his father even though Shoto could surpass him. It's clear that if Endeavor had seen his children as children and unique individuals and not as surrogates for his dream, Toya could have been saved. Shoto wouldn't have suffered, Rei wouldn't have gone crazy in Shoto and Toya suffering, and the Todorokis wouldn't have so much upheaval in their family. Now look, Endeavor is to blame for certain events that transpired in his family, but he's not the only one, and save for what he did to Shoto, he strikes me very differently in this chapter and in this revelation about Toya. We always assume that he was this horrible man and this horrible father, and fine, for Shoto, yes, there were some bad things that happened, no denying that. But he comes off more as confused here. He doesn't know how to talk Toya out of being a hero. He doesn't know how to relate to his children unless it's something to do with quirks or being a hero. And Credit to Rey for being a great wife and a great mother and balancing that out, obviously, until certain things happened with Shoto and really their family broke apart. But it's a very different picture that we've seen thus far in this chapter. It's very different from the endeavor we thought we knew. After learning of the ridiculous pressure that Toyo Todoroki has placed upon himself to surpass Endeavor and All Might and to be a hero, we see at the end of the chapter he basically snaps, and Toya attacks baby Shoto, telling his father, Look at me. Look at me, Endeavor. As if to say, I'm still the chosen one. I'm going to be the one to surpass All Might and achieve that dream. Not this baby. Not anyone. Me. Little baby Shoto, cute as he may be, he ain't having it. I get the idea from this chapter that there are a number of things that affected Rei and led her to burn Shoto and then become hospitalized. Now I'm not absolving Endeavor of anything, of course not, he plays a huge role in this, perhaps the biggest, but he's not the only one that, you know, couldn't bear to see Toya or look at this child and what Toya had become. So. When Rei says, you know, you're not the only one with feelings of guilt and shame, perhaps you're not even the one with the greatest feelings of guilt and shame. I mean, a mother who can't look at her child? That's gotta be rough. So, it paints a different picture about Endeavor and what really happened in the Todoroki household. You know, there was a number of things that led to their family breaking down, and to place the blame on one person's shoulders is simply unfair. You know, Rei... Endeavor and perhaps even Toya if he's old enough to know, you know That maybe what he's doing is wrong. You know everyone is sort of to blame here. You know it it really collapsed for everyone Also because of Endeavor's dream and so much of the focus being on Shoto in the Todoroki household You get the sense from this chapter when Rei is meeting with Endeavor for the first time in what seems to be like a while that they have never really discussed what happened with Toyo Todoroki, and I'm sure we'll get more of this backstory in the next chapter and Ray's feelings on it, because I want to know what she feels and what she has to say. But this is a monumental moment for them to come together and really discuss what happened to Toya. I mean, this can't just be the end, him attacking Shoto and then what, he's sent off? That There's no way. There's more to this story, and I really want to hear it. But... It's eye-opening to see that because so much of the blame was, you know, put on Rei and what happened with Shoto and then, of course, Endeavor and what he did to Shoto, they've never really talked about maybe even the worst case of something in their family, Toya becoming a villain, becoming Dobby. I know I'm looking forward to hear what Rei has to say, but what do you guys think? Will Endeavor and Rei come together in this time of crisis in their family? Or will Natsuo and Fuyumi and Shoto have a little more input and, uh, you know, talk back to Endeavor right now? I mean, he can't go anywhere. He's in that hospital bed. He just has to take it. So let me know what you think is going to happen between the Todorokis down below in the comments. And if you like My Hero Academia content and these chapter reviews, consider enrolling at UA today. 
while it's still around by subscribing. Until next time, hero or villain, plus ultra. Yeah.